Hi folks and welcome back to another Travels Red Rover. I'm Sean. And I'm Corrine. And where are we today, Corrine? Well, we're in Montrose, Colorado, and we're visiting the Museum of the Mountain West. And we're having a great time. This is an absolutely beautiful facility. It's extraordinarily well put together, and we're just going to really enjoy showing it to you. I think it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to share some travel photo tips with you along the way. During our visit to the Museum of the Mountain West, we had the great opportunity to talk to Richard Fike. He's responsible for collecting all the artifacts in the museum and actually creating the museum as you see it now. We hope you enjoy the interview with this extraordinary individual. Without further ado, here's Richard. Anyway, welcome to the Museum of the Mountain West. Uh, my name's Rich Fike. I'm the founder and director, and I started collecting in Skagway, Alaska when I was four years old. And uh, I still have that first artifact. It's a clock about so high, uh, black enamel. The case is in great shape, but the insides were pretty rusted out. But it had mother of pearl inlay in it, and scratched on the back it says, cleaned August 26th, 1898, went through the Condite Gold Rush. So that started this immense collection that we have here. I had my first museum at age eight, second at, at 10, a, th a third at 13, and why? Because I had the guest room full and my folks moved three times. So uh, they never could have any guests stay over. So anyway, I'm an archeologist by profession and had a great career working with Smithsonian and actually was siphoned off to the Park Service and, and then 30 years with the Bureau of Land Management. So. I want you all to enjoy what you see here, and uh, if you have any questions, look me up in my office if I'm not out pulling weeds. The museum is organized around a central building that is set up very much like a walk through small town. The rest of the museum is distributed across a series of very authentic buildings that Richard has collected over the years. If you happen to be in the area of Montrose, Colorado, the museum is very close by. It also happens to be on the road that's leading up to the south entrance of the National Park, the Black Canyon of the Gunnison. To complete a tour of the museum, it will take several hours. However, if you've got less time, then I still recommend that you stop in and visit the main building. It will give you a very good synopsis of the museum, but is by no means all of the best parts. The museum is incredibly good value. At the time of this recording, it was $15 for adults and $5 for children. If you have younger children, one of the games that you might play with them to keep them interested and occupied is to have them guess what some of the artifacts actually are and what they did. Uh, we watched a young family doing this and the kids were having a great time. Although we really enjoyed the main building, the best part of the museum is actually outside in the outbuildings. This building was the Jutton School and it was built in 1889. It was uh, from south of Montrose. It was opened in 1890 and it had 26 students from grade one to grade eight. So this is a little travel tip for those of you that are out doing uh, a little travel log or uh, some travel photos that you want to remember from a, uh, uh, a place that you've come to visit. So we're in this old schoolhouse right now. And one of the things I like to do is, especially in a place where we have a little wire and we can't actually enter the room, I like to take a photograph that encompasses the entire room. But often because of lighting and uh, the way things are sort of arranged, that's kind of a fairly, although it's a fairly good log photo, it's not really often a very interesting photo. So then I will go and look for various bits within the room that are really interesting and might be somewhat iconic of the uh, location. So for example, today I have taken a photograph of the main building, but then this beautiful 
uh, wood-fired stove is absolutely gorgeous. So I've lined up a photograph to take the wood-fired stove. And that's kind of my way of kind of giving both the main room and something that's kind of intricate or interesting in the room. Another potential alternative is to do something like this, where they've hung up these really old shoes and take a close-up of the old shoes hanging on the wall may be another way to uh, identify the uh, school or something about the school that's interesting. The old lunchbox hanging on the wall beside the shoes was another good alternative. Here are a couple other locations that we really enjoyed. When you're visiting a nice interior building in a historical place, you can often use the natural lighting coming in a window for a perfect portrait of your favorite family member. In this location, Sean and I have used the saloon window to provide lighting and uh, put me in the scenery of the saloon. You'll also notice that I've got Kareen posed fairly naturally and have included enough of the saloon so that you know what it is. And don't forget to include some other shots of the uh, saloon so that uh, they can go along with the photograph of your loved one. When you're walking around old towns like this, they will often have uh, pretty original glass in the windows if they can do it, which means that glass is very reflective. So if you try to take a picture from here in through the glass, like that, you get mostly a picture of yourself and your cameraman. The way to get around that is to take your camera, take your iPhone, and put it right up against the glass. That gets rid of the reflection and gives you a pretty decent picture of an old camera that's inside the window. And here are the two photographs. The first is Kareen and I reflected in the window, and the second is the camera that's inside the building. Hi folks, so Kareen and I have come out to the edge of the museum with one of these old cars. Actually, this is an old truck. And I love photographing these. And normally I would pick an end of the day or very early in the morning to photograph it uh, when the light is much, much softer. Right now it's gotten quite harsh. But you know, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And the great thing is there are various apps that you can purchase that will help you filter uh, your photograph in such a way as to make the car look older, add clarity, um, do various things that will make the vehicle look really interesting in the photograph. The truth is we didn't do much to these photographs. We increased the saturation in this photograph. We actually increased the saturation and, and increased the dehaze in that photograph. And then also the same in this photograph, adding some saturation and dehaze. So another little travel tip while you're walking through one of these uh, reconstructed uh, building systems where uh, they've got representative jails and sheriff's offices and things of that sort. You'll often find that they're, for, first of all, poorly lit. And the second thing is that the lighting they have can actually make it very difficult to get a picture. What I always try to do is when I come into a little building like this or a little room like this is I locate the lighting. And there's really two sources of lighting. There's lighting coming in through the front door and there's lighting coming from this very yellow incandescent bulb. And it's a pretty low wattage bulb so it's not very bright in here. So what to be careful of is don't line your picture up so that the bulb is spraying light across your picture and instead take a step forward so that it's behind you and it's lighting towards what you're shooting. Now the only thing you have to be careful of there is that your shadow doesn't become part of the image. So it's something to keep in mind when you come into a building like this. And here are a couple of photographs of the jail where we get the lighting as best that we can with the available sources. And here are a few other photographs that we took while we were walking around the Museum of the Mountain West. If you get a chance to go, don't hesitate. You will be rewarded. Well, that pretty much concludes our 
little trip into this beautiful, beautiful museum, kind of a living walkthrough museum. And we sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of our videos, particularly those we do on travel or on landscape photography, click on that subscribe button down below. And as always, if you want to know when we release videos, hit that little notification button and it'll tell you when we release the next video. If you have some questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Just put it in the comment section below and we'll be sure to respond as soon as possible. And it's been our pleasure taking you along today and until next week, bye for now. Bye for now.